Hello everyone, Jason Warren for DT Met. We have a couple of weak systems, one in the Northeast, one in the Great Lakes, and a couple out in the Intermountain West and along the West Coast right now. But other than that, it's fairly quiet across the United States. This is going to change this week though, as we have a pattern change that's going to evolve, that's going to bring colder weather and perhaps snowier weather to areas east of the Rockies. This pattern change is being governed by a weakening of the polar vortex. This is something that was signaled last month when we had the stratospheric warming event. And this weakening of the polar vortex is allowing cold air to escape the polar regions and move into portions of the mid-latitudes around the northern hemisphere. If we take a look at the strength of the polar vortex, we can see it was very strong since really the end of January all the way until about the beginning of March when it really began to weaken rapidly as observed here on the Arctic Oscillation. And this weakening has allowed cold air to escape the pole and enter into the mid-latitudes not only here in North America, but in other parts of the Northern Hemisphere as well. Taking a look at the jet stream pattern across the United States for the next few weeks, we can see the dominant trough of low pressure over the West Coast will gradually break down in favor of a ridge of high pressure that will extend into the Intermountain West. Downstream of this, troughing will become more frequent and more persistent across the eastern United States, which will allow more bouts of cold weather to come into the east and more chances for snow. We can see this in the uh, CPC 6 to 10 day outlook, which has colder than average temperatures expected across most of the central and eastern United States, with a minimum centered over the Ohio Valley and Tennessee Valley, and even some above average temperatures expected over the desert southwest. If we extend this to the 8 to 14 day outlook, we could see below average temperatures from the northern Rockies eastward across much of the remainder of the country as we head into the middle and latter portions of the month. Looking even further down the road, we've had some questions regarding the ENSO, the El Nino Southern Oscillation. And uh, we're looking right now at the sea surface temperature anomalies across the Pacific. And this is our La Nina that's currently occurring. It's shifted from the eastern Pacific westward into the central Pacific and is now beginning to fade. And this is something that we've been expecting to happen since we are now in a third year La Nina, which is something that's a little unusual. Not unprecedented, but it is unusual. But you can see these anomalies are fading and we're even beginning to see some warm anomalies now develop off the west coast of South America. These are all an indication that we're likely exiting this phase of La Nina and probably entering into a neutral phase which is expected to develop over the next couple of months. And this will likely lead to a developing El Nino, most likely a weak El Nino sometime during the summer months. While this may have an impact on the weather patterns across the United States as we head through the, the mid and late spring and into summer, it looks like the degradation of the polar vortex will have more of an immediate impact on our weather as we head through the remainder of March and even into April.